everyone, and welcome to the Sports Grid Fantasy Football Podcast, simulcast on the Roto Grinders Podcast Network. I'm Davis Maddock. I'm joined by two of the biggest fish in the known universe, Sammy Reed and Nate Noling. And uh, good, good news for all of you guys. Uh, we all lost again. So, <laughs> Let's go. So, so definitely listen to guys who are posting two losing weeks in a row. Uh, talk to you about how they lost money on uh, on DraftKings.com. That's a good thing. How you doing, Sammy? Your Steelers, a big, big win against the Los Angeles Chargers. Yeah, but it's not even that great because the Chargers are squall. And, you know, frankly, like, I'm drunk and, like, on five hours of sleep. Let's do this thing, man. I'm ready. Your boy yeah. Duck just let him – just led the way. Yeah. What he, he, com- com- he, com- he completed zero passes over uh, – over 10 yards in the air. Bro, so Davis, the, the is clips, just the dust? him doing the duck call was just, like, so embarrassing. I, like, almost <laughs> that That's your QB, bro. I'm like, dude, dude you got to shut that down. Like, quit showing that on TV. Davis, wasn't Juju your number one? Oh, yeah. Like, and uh, Are all your seasonal teams just dust? No. No, I have great seasonal teams because I drafted all the good players also. So when you draft yeah, a lot of drafted good, all the Darwin Thompson and Malcolm Brown, like Davis is just rolling in it. I mean one could say. It's been it's been a very good it's been a very good seasonal fantasy football year for me. It's we're we're gonna see what happens with best ball. Obviously a lot of stuff hinges on like I I just faded all the bad running backs. Um so if other if bad running backs start doing good, then you know then you know we might uh, we might have some problems. Uh, today, yeah, bad, is, bad running the backs did bad. Turned into this is the go cast. Now we're gonna <laughs> we're gonna talk about Davis's best ball teams because we're all just the only thing. Dust. <laughs> so let's. I guess I guess we should uh, we should start from here. When when lineups locked, did you guys feel confident or non confident? Did you feel like your team was good like- or bad? I felt amazing. I'm not going to lie to you. Like, I was, like, over-regging for stuff because I'm just like, dude, my lineup is so hot. Like, I'm just going to smoke it. Last week, I'll be honest, I didn't feel that great. Um, And I probably played less volume than usual because I just wasn't that confident. But this week, I was just like, uh, I'm going to crush everybody. And uh, it didn't quite turn out like that, honestly. So I yeah. also overregged for games, not because I felt great about my lineup, but because I was chasing from last week, obviously. <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't so, so I post, you know, I posted extra head to heads at a high, like at more, like n- Davis, normally like thirty five extra Davis, one dollar games. It's just <laughs> no, I mean I max out on one, two, and three dollar games every every week, but I posted extra fives and tens this week. And uh, it just it just wasn't a good idea, as it turned out, because I picked a so lot going of players. All in on Malcolm it, Brown week wasn't a good move. I, mean, I don't actually Malcolm Brown not even close to the worst play I made. Yeah, I, I will say this: like I played Malcolm Brown, but at least I didn't lose fading Malcolm Brown. Losing yeah. losing fading Malcolm Brown is way worse than what Sammy and I did. <laughs> so, so Nate, Nate, tell us about the experience of sharp fading Malcolm Brown. And still <laughs> it was terrible. It was terrible <laughs> to watch to watch a game like that play out exactly how you like. No, I just we can, we can the video of this podcast for so much money. <laughs> I faded the chalk and I'm still not going to make money. I faded the bag chalk and I'm still not going to make money. Okay. So <laughs> let's just, let's rewind. Let's try and do it as we normally. Okay. Quarterback. <laughs> well, who, had, who had the highest score? Not me. Sammy? No, one, one seventeen point five, bro. Okay. I, I beat that. <laughs> I thought bro, I had a bad week at 128. I'm pressing buttons beat that. All right. So I didn't beat it. I didn't beat it by much. No, I, 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 you probably won Nate because you didn't have Brown. I had one twenty. Okay, I had one twenty. I, Sammy, I thought I had a bad. Week. I'm sorry, dude. One <laughs> one twenty. Like, oh, I got one twenty. You got one seventeen. Like you fish. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever, dude. Let's talk about my lineup. I'm ready to go. Yeah. Okay. So play so Lamar. They decided to play the games. So I played. I played Lamar. Nate, you played Lamar. Yeah. I. 
I was on Lamar most of the week. I like Lamar a lot. I yeah, know and, spots, and yeah. Sammy, you played Kyler? Yeah, like you guys – I mean, it, Lamar was a great play, but, like, you guys are – especially you, Davis, you're bitch made for not playing Kyler Murray, who's like – Oh, I, I am. And, I mean, I went – I went. I, I was pretty much legit, like, all in on him in tournaments. Like, I think 50% of the lineups I made today were stacks of that game. Didn't end up mattering, okay, of course. Sorry. I lost money. I don't want anyone to think somehow that I made money in tournaments – because I didn't, because uh, you want it. You well, want clear this up right now. <laughs> so, by the way, I just, can I rewind a little bit? You know why I didn't make any money today, despite having close to the optimal mix? One, I boosted Melvin, or I boosted Malcolm Brown way too much in the optimizer, and I didn't allow double tight end. And what won the PM slate was George Kittle and Austin Hooper lineups. Like, that was, like, what shipped the, the PM slate. Yeah. So, I'm just a, an yep. extra fish. The Hooper thing is tough. Yeah. Uh, so there were only four playable quarterbacks, though. We we agree on this. It was it was Kyler, it was Watson, it was Mahomes, and it was Lamar. Lamar. Those those were the only options at quarterback. I think yeah. there were some cheap some people who were looking cheap and went Minshew, which that was, was like, bad. Which I, I think I didn't led play, to a weird construction, but I didn't hate Minshew. Today. Minshew was on. I had some head to heads people play that. Yeah. Those yeah, are some I of the think. only games I won. Yeah, I think I, I won like 10% of my heads heads and, and they all played Minshew for sure. Yeah. I, I mean, I didn't hate Minshew as long. I just didn't, the construction. There was just, just there was just no reason for it. I just, I couldn't have found the lineup where it made sense to go that cheap at quarterback. Cause Kyle, like the, 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 I think all four of those quarterbacks got 25, right? Or did Mahomes not? Oh yeah. Mahomes did. Mahomes, dude. Mahomes only got 20. Yeah. So really? Mahomes. Yeah. Fish. Yeah, Mahomes some, actually underperformed compared to the rest of those guys quite a bit, especially quite a bit. Yeah, like when you're when you're 15. What is he? 13 points below Lamar at 600 dollars less. Like that actually kind of hurts you at QB. But I still lost. So. Oh yeah. my God, you guys! I just I just like looked at my. I'm looking at the 25 dollar double up that I look for for ownership percentage, and I have a notification, and it says like you have won like less than a hundred dollars. Yeah, <laughs> it's, oh, it's like so miserable. A, Oh my God! Please yeah, anytime, this anytime, thing. anytime you're getting the the oh you won it, you get the alert on your phone and you're like oh you won twenty seven dollars. It's like oh great, <laughs> great. Dude, if I get if I get that email, I'm gonna jump out of my <laughs> second story window. <laughs> Dude, <laughs> let me let me tell you a little life hack. Just block DraftKings from your email. You don't want any of the emails they're gonna send you. Nope. Yeah. Nope. That's uh that's that's a that's a big win. Uh, Davis, okay. How, how come you didn't go Kyler and Cash? Like he's your boy here in this spot. Like. So what I did was I, I loaded up the Daily Roto Optimizer. I clicked lock on Le'Veon Bell, Leonard Fournette, DeAndre Hopkins, uh, Malcolm Brown, Jets defense, and I played the optimal that I liked the most out of the, the top 10, and it was uh, – it included Lamar. I mean, yeah, I thought – Lamar I, was a great play, like no doubt. If I, I, if I would have wanted to play – Julio over Hopkins, or if I'd wanted to play a 6K wide receiver over one of the wide receivers that I played, uh, then I would have played Kyler and felt fine about it. You'd imagine Lamar, playing Julio. Like, how dust is Julio Jones? Dude, Lamar, 100 might yards. Had, Lamar might have had 100 yards rushing in the first quarter. Like, it was – I swear he had 80, I looked up, He had 85 in the first half. Yeah, I looked up and I was like, wait, what? 85 in yeah. the – It's kind of like Malcolm Brown, only – he kept <laughs> Only he kept getting points. <laughs> he didn't stop after that. I mean, here's the thing. Malcolm I'm going to say this: the, the, the Rams, the Rams play the Atlanta Falcons next week. Malcolm Brown is 5,700. Gurley's probably not going to play. That's going to be like a real decision that people are no, going to have Henderson's to make. Henderson's the move. He's not. Henderson got less snaps, less carries. Like, and he sucked. Like, he doesn't suck, but he fumbled. And also, it does, like I just I need everyone to know this: inefficiency at running back does just it just doesn't matter because it's all related to your team performance. If your team sucks, you are also going to suck. If your team does better, you are going to do better. And this was like Malcolm Brown getting four points in a game where Jared Goff threw seventy-eight yards is actually kind of a minor miracle. Are are are, are you guys just ready to say that the Rams are just dust? Over? Yes. Yeah. Totally. I, I think I think it's more yeah. likely than not that they miss the playoffs. Dude, is, is Sean McVay doing a bunch of cocaine? Is that 
what's happening there. Like Sammy, I don't know. Has anyone ever told you this? You kind of look like if, if Sean McVay got hit with a stick. (laughs) (laughs) Oh dude, I'm about to like actually pass out. (laughs) Hold on. I just, I just was like, look, I just was like looking at Sean McVay on the TV today and I'm looking at you right now. And it's just like, it's like Sean McVay just lived a hard 20 years after the Rams fired him. I'm Sean McVay 10 years after the Super Bowl loss. (laughs) (laughs) He's out of the league. He's doing the guilt cast. (laughs) Sean McVay would probably know better than to have used Malcolm Brown in cash, to be fair. <laughs> oh, buddy. He doesn't... Oh, but dude, we could sell this video for so much money. Like, link a page. Uh, I, might, I might have to post it on YouTube. Maybe I will. Yeah, you can just link that with the GoFundMe we're going to need for our entry. Yeah, oh, we're definitely going to need it. Uh, okay, so let's move on. Let's move on to running backs. Uh, Sammy, you and I played the same three, I think. Le'Veon yep. Bell, Leonard Fournette, Malcolm Brown. Yeah, awesome. I I don't I don't re- I don't regret any of these choices other than to say that the Rams are fraudulent and I don't believe in any of their team totals ever and they suck. Okay, so so look like I watched the the first drive of the Rams and they were just giving it to Malcolm Brown and I watched him and I told a buddy who was watching the game with me I'm like look Malcolm Brown is so much better than Todd Gurley right now this is unbelievable like. Gurley is dust and Malcolm Brown is going to win leagues. And he got like zero yards after that, which I mean, just kicked me in the underside of my nutsack. Like, I I don't know how this happened. He was like on his way to rolling. What even happened in this game? Like, how did he not smash? Everyone was like, dude, Malcolm Brown's a donkey chalk and blah, 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 blah. And it's like, look, like they're the, they're, that's the running back on the Rams, which has been just an uber valuable position for the better part of three years. And they don't trust Darrell Henderson. And he's got 40 yards on his first drive. Like, how does he not smash? And uh, I guess we saw how he didn't smash. So here we are. Broke and sad. It was, it was bad. It was very bad. Yeah. And uh, Nate, he just here's your chance to tell us why it was fishy. It was the exact reasons I was saying before Locke. I, he was, all of his projection felt volatile to me because it was touchdown dependent and it was rushing dependent. Like he wasn't getting workload from the passing game. And I didn't project him for more than like one or two targets at the max. And so like when I looked at his projection and I looked at what percentage of that is made up from, from rushing points and what percentage of it is made up from a touchdown expectation, it was way too fragile of a play for me at 4-3 when I just – I don't know. I didn't want to do it. I looked all, all week for reasons not to play him. And so, then I, so, before hey, Locke just decided me, not to. Let me ask you one question. What was your – did you change your mix at all versus like 50-50 slash double-ups and heads, heads-to-heads? If I was sharp, I probably should have. I didn't. Okay. I didn't. Because, because I'm going to say just one like actual thing, and then I'm just going to be like drunk and belligerent the rest of the podcast. When you go for a fade of a guy who's going to be like 60% owned in cash, a low price running back who projects to get a good part of the workload for a good offense that's a good home favorite, et cetera, you should be playing more head-to-heads because you want to enjoy the spoils if you get like a 90th percentile, right? Mm -hmm. You don't want to play a ton of double-ups where it's like, okay, like I outsmarted the field. Now I have a 70th percent or an 80th percent lineup and I just cash. You know what I mean? Like you want to wait more toward head to heads if you make the distinct decision to fade a player like this. Um, That's all I got. Yeah. Yeah. I I agree with you. I, I basically, here's the thing. I just, I looked at all of those metrics and he was very similar to like, not in overall projection, but like similar to like a Carlos Hyde or Adrian Peterson from a just touchdown dependency and run and, and rushing dependency. And so I, I just wasn't going to play him in cash. And so when I looked at the running backs I wanted, there was two guys that were the clear locks, Fournette and Bell. And then I really wanted Dalvin Cook as my third running back. And so I ended yep. up getting up to Dalvin Cook. Uh, I probably would have gone Kamara if it wasn't for the injury news with Kamara. But um, I don't know. I felt good about those three running backs. Chubb maybe could have been in there, but 
coaches. You know, have- my, my, my one big regret from this day is not playing Adrian Peterson over Malcolm Brown and just like shoving on both of you. I mean, if you would have played Adrian Peterson, that would have been, that would have been the Sammy play. That would have just been, I, that would have been the, the, the truly blitzed play. Bro, we got the bonus. I, he did, I mean, he did. He did, and he was, what, was he, like, what, 5% owned? I don't maybe, know. I didn't, maybe I didn't. not even. I don't know. I didn't blame him. I think I, I think I nuked him in tournaments. Yeah, 136 yards total, two catches. He almost, he, almost had a, he almost had a receiving touchdown. He dropped it. He was, like, in the end zone. Oh, well, I'm glad I didn't go through that tilt. Uh, so, Nate, t- tell me a little bit about what you did with the rest of your lineup because you ended up going with Dalvin, because obviously I think in a vacuum, that's not a bad idea because Dalvin's been one of the best running backs this entire yeah. season. He's very elite. Uh, but what did that do? Did you kind of manage that? Yeah, I just went cheaper at wide receiver. Um, there wasn't many wide receivers that I felt great about. Uh, obviously I liked Hopkins a lot. Hopkins was probably my favorite high priced Um but overall, I mean, I liked Hopkins, I liked Boyd, but I didn't feel great about all these receivers, so I just went Crowder, Fitz, and Landry for my wide receivers. I um, I would have I I, oh I think my that God. my lineup would I think my lineup would have won if I played my Crowder team, which is so infuriating. Wait, wait, can we rewind the podcast just a second? You played Jarvis Landry and who? Crowder, and then Fitz. He played. He played the. He played the all possession, no touchdown team. Dude, Nate scored more points than me. I am like legit gonna douse myself in kerosene and just light a match right now. It's going up, boys. It's going Nate, up. Nate faded. Nate faded Malcolm Brown to play three dudes with a touchdown <laughs> equity combined of under one. <laughs> I don't even feel that bad about this, Nate, because I pivoted to get a lower score. You know what I mean? Yeah, like, I, I knew I was dust at halftime, so I pivoted off Austin Hooper. Um, but, dude, that is that would, is. Would you vicious. would you have made money if you didn't pivot? No, for sure not. Well, wait, wait. What did Kittle get? Kittle got twenty one point three. Yeah. Oh, so you were fine. Like, well, I mean, not fine. You just would have lost either way. Yeah, 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 yeah. I had, I had no chance whatsoever. My big thing, so I played. Wide receiver uh, was a mess this week. Nobody that is correct. About, nobody felt good about wide receivers. Why? Would I this- felt, I felt very good about two wide receiver plays. Yeah, I felt great. I Hopkins felt extremely one anybody could have felt good about. No, I felt great about Robert Woods. It just <laughs> didn't end up being bad. <laughs> oh, zero, zero reception, Robert Woods. <laughs> <Davis>. <laughs> I have explained this Robert Wood things to you a thousand times. He is not the same guy that we remember. Well, you know who's not the same guy that we remember? Julio? Sean McVay. He's, he's Sammy Reed now. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's like, it's, like literally, it's like literally teams just started bringing an extra safety up into the box, and, and Sean McVay just lost his mind. He was like, I don't know what to do with this. He just yeah. He, they he start can't, playing he, like a wide six line, and he just can't. <laughs> he he, he, he the can't figure it. <laughs> it's like it's like all of a sudden he just oh, it's so bad. He's it's so bad. Madden, and he just keeps like picking new opponents who he think won't pick up on. <laughs> it's like so. Losing. It's like everyone knows, like. uh I don't know. There's there's this play in Madden now. This is this is definitely in the weeds, but it's called it's called play action crossers, and literally everyone who's like just decent at the game just calls this same play because it's broken and the computer can't defend it. But the people who are really good at Madden know how to do the defense against it, and it's like McVeigh is up against someone who knows the defense to stop his play, but he just keeps calling the same play and is and is just surprised that the results don't change. Just, I can't break the top 500, bro. I don't know what the issue is. <laughs> Unbelievable. Like, uh, McVay is dust. That entire team is dust. I'm off. Uh, so, dude, they play the I, Falcons I, next week. Oh, dude. This it's is like, so it's, bad. It's, <laughs> that sounds great for those who are going to play the slate next week. I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> Sammy is sitting to self exclude for three months. <laughs> self exclude. <laughs> 
so right, so, so okay. next week next week at atlanta jared goff 6200 malcolm brown 57 daryl henderson 3.5 Cooper Cup, 7.4. Oh, Robert Woods, 5.9. Guess who I'm going to be playing a cash next week if you pick up my head. <laughs> Robert Woods is going to be his head. My only like chance of making money targeting. next week. Sammy's so um, cool pay for internet anymore. He's kind of off. He's broadcasting this from a public <laughs> library on the 3G network they have He's there. That's true. <laughs> I'm in a Starbucks. <laughs> oh, he's definitely in a Starbucks bathroom <laughs> recording this right now. <laughs> All right, let's uh, let's let's talk about. I mean, I don't. Should we let Nate like try to justify his wide receiver plays? Or yeah, not? let's. I I would. Lo- so here, well, here, let me okay, let me Crowder throw it to you like this. Fine. Crowder and Fitz so, are fine. So Crowder, I wanted to play him. He was in the top optimal on Daily Roto. I just was sketched out that he only played 31 of 50 snaps the week before, and that. He got out targeted nine to two by Demarius Thomas. By Demarius Thomas, and that almost put me off of him. I, you texted that, and I looked it up on PF, and I was like, "Oh crap! I can't play a guy who's." But the more I thought about it, the more I just looked at like the last. It was three just weeks, totally random, and yeah, like it was I, just, I just Luke threw out. Yeah. I, I threw out the Jets' last three games, and I just said, "What do we know about Darnold?" And the reality is, like, it's a different team. What do Donald. we know about Darnold? What do we know about Gase? He's always peppered those slot dudes yeah. with targets. So I, I literally just pretended those last three weeks didn't happen with Falk. And that was why I was okay with, with Crowder at 4-2. I was fine with Crowder. Fitz, I don't know. Fitz was like, I, I didn't love Fitz, but I thought he was fine. At no, I didn't love him either, but he was. I thought he was a good play. And I wanted to have some Arizona exposure. And he left a better game out there. They didn't, so they were... I, Two times they were on like the three yard line and didn't call that dumb Fitz play where they do this the screen pick play for him and then he just lunges forward. So he didn't get to do that. And he also had like a 25 yard gain where Kyler threw it to him in the seam and no one was around him for like 10 yards and he just didn't look and the ball just like skipped right by his feet. Yeah. So. And then the, I don't know the Jarvis thing. Jarvis might just no just Jarvis might have it's bad. Bro, Take the all week. You like, like mentioned literally. Jarvis Landry on Friday, and we were like, dude, by Sunday it'll be fine, but Nate will never play Jarvis Landry. Nate, we, we literally from actually. like from like Tuesday on, we were like, well, that's egregious. Don't do that. And like <laughs> Jarvis was in the top optimal on DR, and I told Dink just straight up, I was like, oh, I just won't play that. I won't play the top optimal because it has Jarvis Landry in it. And uh, that's why, because Jarvis Landry is literally the worst. And, and, and Brown's Jarvis Landry is worse than the worst. He is terrible. Yeah, it was tilting. Uh, he had a touchdown that was like, he reached for it. They he reached it. for it and he fumbled. Yeah, yeah, and it was like, oh, that's a TD. <laughs> that's going to get overturned. And it didn't. And I was like, then my day's over. But it was, it was like, I, too, I don't and hold on, wait. Can we we this. just need to walk this back even further because you didn't play seventy four hundred dollar DeAndre Hopkins against Kansas City in the highest total game of the week. Yeah, your brand is just Cook. like because I played Cook happening? instead. I went to Cook instead. I mean, Hopkins was a better play than Cook. Being a parent can be really challenging. Child and Family Resource Network focuses on connecting pregnant parents and those with kids under the age of five with free support services to help them on their parenting journey. Everyone deserves someone they can turn to for help with parenting. Visit childandfamilyresourcenetwork.org today. Like yeah, he I'm, was not pro- he was not projected for more points, but because wide receiver was so shaky this week and running back had like five playable options, I just I think that was bigly bad. I don't know. I just felt Dalvin, Fournette, and Bell just gave me access to the highest floor on the slate. I mean, to be fair. You were basically hoping that Dalvin outdid Malcolm Brown so well that it made up for the rest It didn't matter what I did at receiver. I was so confident in Malcolm Brown's shaky floor that I just said, as long as I can avoid this, it doesn't matter what I do at receiver. I'll take Jarvis Landry's eight points. I'll take Fitz's fifteen. I'll take whatever Crowder gets. Like Nate, you want to know? You want to know something? If you had just stone faded Malcolm Brown and MME today, you'd probably have more money now than you had this morning. <laughs> like like if, if you just if you just went in and you just entered in like all like the one, two, and three dollar stuff and just just didn't play Malcolm Brown at all and max entered stuff, you probably would have banged something because he was like crazy owned and everything. Yeah, I told you from like early on in the week I didn't like Malcolm Brown. I don't know. 
That I don't. A... I do. I just, just like whatever, dude. He, if 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 that game had played to what the Vegas line was, he would have been a good play, and it didn't. They got. They were three point favorites. They got beaten by fourteen. So that yeah, he's going to be really bad. If the team, if if a, if you play a running back on a team that that scores seven points, you might have played a bad play. But to be fair, how often is Minnesota going to put up thirty four and Cook's going to put up? 13? I don't think Cook. I don't think Cook the play was bad. I had him a ton in tournaments. I boosted him a ton. I thought he was great. I I just there was no way I was going to play him over Hopkins. If Cook outscores Brown by like twenty here, which was like totally reasonable. It didn't matter what I do. You needed you needed to get to like one thirty five. You needed uh, I had one twenty nine. Jarvis Landry. I had, like, had one twenty nine. So I just I don't know the Jarvis bro, thing. The, might the have worst, been. Ca- bro. The worst cash fades are low price running backs who expect to get a lion's share of the workload on yeah. teams that have like twenty seven point implied team totals as home favorites, like. Uh, it, honestly, like I, I think it was a bad decision by you, and compounded by the fact that you had to put Jarvis Landry in your cash game lineup to make it work. That's a that's that that's that's my humble opinion as somebody who scored 117.5 points. In cash thanks, <laughs> thanks, future Sean McVay. <laughs> <laughs> Sean McVay is coming back from the future to tell you that uh, not playing Malcolm Brown today was fish. I mean, I he really do. 40 think... yards on the first drive, like it was all happening. Yeah, Unreal. It, you you really should have been buried. And if he gets if he gets that Robert Woods touchdown, you're feeling like a real dog because he's got ten <laughs> fantasy points at the end of the first drive. How old was Robert Woods? Robert Woods was like thirty something percent owned, wasn't he? No, he was four percent owned. Thirty percent. Davis, Davis, you played a four percent. It was. It was me. It was. was, It was Davis and like eighteen people in the deepest slack that he talked into Woods. No, I don't. I don't know any. I don't know. I don't know anyone else. I don't know anyone else who. uh, I don't know anyone else who played him. But here's the thing. So here's the thing about wide receiver is because all the chalk went to two guys. It went to Cooper Cup, who was horrible, and it went to DeAndre Hopkins, who wasn't very good either. And outside of that, just there were not a ton of guys who were even owned in the double digits. Like Julio was 12%. Larry Fitzgerald was like 18 to 20%. But you're, you're seeing a ton of guys like Odell, Thielen, like uh, D.D. Westbrook. All these guys are just hovering around 10%. Like there, there just was not a big – chalk spot at wide receiver other than Cooper Cup and DeAndre Hopkins. People play Didi Westbrook in cash? Holy hell, how how did I lose? Dude, I lost to some egregious teams today, bro. Like <laughs> Well, I mean, all you needed to do today, we've we've gone past the elephant in the room. All you had to do to win today was just play Hooper. Yeah, Hooper tight end with Andrews, we got 99 from Andrews. How tilting is that? The Andrews thing was so tilting. The only reason none of us play Austin Hooper. No, I'm not gonna. Oh my god! Very by this flowchart tight end thing. Okay, so so first, so so can we rewind just a second? I I want to talk about my receiver plays real fast. Oh yeah, you made you made one play that was so bad, but I didn't have the heart to tell you. (laughs) Wait, who did you play, Sammy? (laughs) He'll he's gonna say. (laughs) All right. Let's let's table that for a second. I want to talk about no, Tyler no, Boyd. tell me who did you play? <laughs> no, no, no. I want to talk about Tyler Boyd right quick. Um, I thought coming into this week that Tyler Boyd was such a smash play, <laughs> and nobody was talking about Tyler Boyd. I mean, look, Baltimore's defense is squalid. Like they are allowing the second most points per play overall to their opponents. They're a big home favorite. That means that. Cincinnati's going to have to throw a bunch in this game. And Tyler Boyd's just like, dude, he's got a big-ass market share. He, he has a big whopper. Like, Nate, you should be on this. I thought he was the biggest lock of the slate for double-digit targets. And he got three catches for 10 yards. This destroyed my whole day. If I could point to one effing guy who jobbed me today, it was Tyler Boyd. I, I, I don't I, I don't even think it was a bad play. Like if you guys can sell me that Tyler Boyd wasn't good, go on ahead. The, the no, floor. Boyd was a fine play. I liked it, Boyd. I I, 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 I honestly think, think I ran really bad with Boyd. I think you did too. I think Boyd was fine. Well, you I will say this. You did I mean you ran, like anytime you play a team's number one wide receiver and they get three for ten, you, you run bad. 
Yeah. Like I, I, I don't, I don't mean to suggest that. He, uh, that Boyd's not the reason you that. lost. Sammy. Andy Dalton threw it 39 times, and it is. Sammy, who else did you play? There must be something here that you're burying the lead on. He lost Boyd's because he, he lost, lost because he played. He didn't play Hooper, and he played Malcolm Brown. It's all you needed to lose. Right, but okay. So my third receiver was Michael Gallup. Um, I yeah, I didn't think that was very good. It, why did you text me? Yeah, that's fine. Because <laughs> I just I can't argue with you because I'm playing Robert Woods, so it's not like I can be like, oh, Robert Woods is some smash play after we've been arguing about it all week. Look, look, bro. I was so pumped to have Hopkins, Boyd, who I both just thought were absolute smashes, and then I had 5,600 left, and I was like it's either Gallup or Woods and Nate kind of talked me off of Woods. Like if you look at his actual opportunity numbers, they're not, Nate's right. They're not nearly as good as they've been in the past. I was already playing Malcolm Brown and I'm like, look, Gallup legit like leads the NFL in yards per game. I know it's a small sample, but like in the games he's played, he's smashing. He's getting a lot of the market share. He's getting targets downfield. I thought he was a. I thought he was a pretty good play as your number three receiver. And uh, honestly, he was fine. He was fine. It just. It just like. I you played Hopkins, which I thought was good. Uh, clearly, like I like Hopkins was the one guy you had to have. They just. I did think Fitzgerald was clearly better than both Boyd and Gallup, and I thought that you were maybe putting too much on Fitzgerald. But I mean, like, I guess Gallup really wasn't the issue. It's just I, I thought Fitzgerald was just such a good play. Like, oh, like, like Fitzgerald, we have for like just a crazy amount of targets, basically, just because that team there, there was so much pace in that game. Fair. Uh, I think Fitzgerald like jobbed me so hard because I you were you were tilting so hard last week. Will Fuller last week, like yeah. I just can't get Fitzgerald right, but. Let's let's move to tight end where zero percent of the Gil cast played Austin Hooper, uh, but I have an excuse. I was playing Austin Hooper, and, and you had to get off him. And I just pivoted to to Kittle because uh, Boyd and the rest of my entire lineup was so screwed in the in the morning games that I'm like, I need differentiation. I pivoted to Kittle. He had a good game, eight for one hundred three. Got the bonus, twenty one point three. Uh, Hooper just kind of had the same, and he got in the and he got in the zone. But Hooper was the play that I was going with. I kept him on Fanduel cash. I, I was mean, on Hooper. I was freaking to Mark Andrews and Austin Hooper had the exact same game, but Andrews fell one yard short of the bonus. Yeah, like they Hooper they just were the same. They were the same play. And I yeah. there, so one we had Mark Andrews projected for three and a half more fantasy points than Austin Hooper. So like you just you never see like 1v1s that are that far apart, like in football, because everyone projects in such a narrow range. And two, I had Lamar, so I kind of liked the stack. I wasn't – I mean, Hooper, I would have – my tight ends that I was looking at was Andrews, Kittle, or Kelsey. I wasn't going to get to Hooper. It was literally the only reason I got off Kittle was because of that groin tweet from Schefter, which I'm never going to listen to these – pre-game injury reports again because I, I i was the same i had kittle i shifted yeah. to hooper in the morning based off that report yeah uh, but then i pivoted at, at like at the end of the first wave of games because i needed to yeah but, i was never gonna play hooper it was gonna be andrews kittle or kelsey and that was my three tight ends i was see for. i don't i don't know that i love stacking lamar and andrews um, well with mark with marquise brown out he just I mean, he saw nine targets. Like, he yeah. did see a crazy target share. He's the number one guy in the red zone there. Without Marquise Brown, there was no reason. If I was playing, uh, if I was playing uh, Lamar, there was no reason to not go. I think it would have been bad to play Lamar and Hooper if you could have gotten Lamar and Andrews, which you could have because it, it, would, it, would it would not have been bad. It just no, wouldn't is, have this been. This is not – I mean, the thing is it's not a GPP. Like – the thing you want to avoid in cash to me theoretically is stacking a game where that team was like an 11 point home favorite. Like if they get out to a big lead and they just run, 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 your stack is dust and your team is dust. Like I think they're both good plays in a vacuum. I just wouldn't want to overexpose myself in cash to the Baltimore passing attack. You know what I mean? Well, Does that make Baltimore sense? Passing attack is Mark, I mean, with without Marquise Brown, Andrews is like one of the only tight ends with like a. I had a, nearly a twenty five percent target share on this slate, where Hooper's like a fifteen twenty percent guy. There's like three other. There's 
Julio, there's Ridley, there's other guys there in Atlanta who are going to get some work where there was like nobody taking this work from Andrews. No, no, I, I get it from a percentage standpoint, but you also have to realize that Andrews has, or uh, um, Hooper has ran the most routes in football among tight ends coming into this week. Right. Yeah, but and Andrew, it, it, like, Andrews' volume has been super similar to like he's had at least seven targets in every single game. And he, but other, like, unlike Hooper, he has no competition in the red zone for targets. He's not a teammate of Julio Jones. Like, when they're going to pass on the five yard line, it's going to him. And this is fair. I'm not even trying to argue like Andrews is a bad play. I guess I'm just saying that I would want to differentiate either at quarterback or tight end. I wouldn't want to go all in on the Baltimore passing stack in cash when they're huge home favorites. Like, honestly, I think it was a bit of run good that, that since he stayed in this game a little bit. I mean, here's the thing. I, I, I just don't look at raw total. Like, when you look at, like, oh, he's the leader in routes run. But when you look at, like, share of the offense and things like that, the Andrews Hooper thing isn't even that close. I mean, like, Andrews, Andrews is like a 4.5% target share more. More, air, more share of his team's air yards. Part of the problem is that Atlanta has just run so many passes and, like, I mean, they just throw the ball. So, like, their, their numbers are inflated based on the games that they've played in so far. Well, but like, well exactly. That's, I, that's what I'm saying. Like, you can look at percentages and, and all that, and that's great. But at the end of the day, you also have to look at, like, raw attempts. And I feel like Atlanta probably projected – I don't know what y'all's numbers say, but Atlanta probably projected for quite a bit more passing attempts – overall today than than Baltimore did yeah I had him projected for more for sure but it wasn't like enough to make up the difference in raw total projection between well the reason why it gets it gets kind of close because the Ravens lead the NFL and plays run so there just are more opportunities for pass plays to be called when you're just on the field that much so yeah, so it, it was like pretty second. close I had Atlanta as like second in percentage of plays that are going to be passes where Baltimore's like second to last on this slate. Yeah. We, yeah. We, I mean, we had them 50, 50 and we had the, we had the Falcons 40, 60. So yeah, like Baltimore yeah. at 52 Atlanta at like 60 something. So dude, wh whatever. I mean, at the end of the day, like all three of us didn't play Austin Hooper in cash games. Yeah. So we just, crazy. we should have, we should have followed the flow chart. We should have just followed the flow chart. Just such fish. Do you know how tilting it is? It's not even like the 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 retrospective, the retro whatever flowchart that Snizzle posts. It's the next week flowchart that he posts on Sunday night. Like, oh, I'm just gonna lock in Evan Ingram. What do I do with the rest of my lineup? You know, and uh, yeah, that 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 tilted just, my balls off tonight. It's just tough when you get what it was it six. I get 99 yards from a tight end, and I literally lose because a 60 something percent tight end is owned. Same price and goes eleven more. What, what was the cash line? It was eight, nine more than I had. One thirty. It depend on the contest. It's like one thirty-five. Yeah. Yeah, but, that was just so dusty. But I mean, literally, Hooper. Hooper literally was the difference for me in almost every contest I played. If I would have played Hooper, or if Hooper would have scored sixteen and not 25, 28, whatever he scored. Shouldn't have played Landry, bro. I mean, literally, Hooper was 12 points more than Andrews. And it's just like, it sucks that ownership was that. Let's, hey, can we, can we talk a little bit about running back a bit? Because we, uh, we were all, like, just jammed in on Fournette and Bell. And me and Davis went Brown and you went Cook, which I think all was super reasonable. Like, Fournette and Bell are – two of the only three backs who are getting like 90 plus percent of the workload in 90 plus percent. Yeah, except Bell, Bell kept getting pulled off for Bilal Powell today. Yeah, yeah that was, that was real that? sweet. Uh, can we talk about a lot of people playing Chris Carson? I saw in one of my double ups, he was like 30% owned. Yeah. It's no. just, I mean, people think when Rashad Penny's out, you just jam Carson and then they just ran like God. Yeah. But, but that happened like Carson smashed and uh, smashed us in a lot of ways. And I, I was, Considering him in cash, so I I re ran my tournament me. stuff with him in, but I didn't I didn't even think about playing him in cash. I don't think he got target. Did he get targeted in this game? Yeah, he had he had four catches uh, for thirty five yards, mate. Oh, he might just be he might just be a smash every time Penny doesn't play. Nick Chubb was a smash. Like Nick Chubb got it. Um, oh, Nick Chubb was like the best tournament play of the week. Yeah, Chubb was a good play. I didn't look. I didn't have Carson anywhere in consideration though. Like, were we fish for not 
opening up our player pool consideration a little bit in running backs. No, Bell, Bell and Fournette are like the safest 28 touches you can find in fantasy football right now other than Christian McCaffrey. Dude, Le'Veon Bell scored 12.3 and he had a touchdown. <sighs> he was – to say he was egregious would be kind. And they, and they were ahead the entire game. The entire game? I mean, dude, he just – like he got one target. Yeah. Like he was getting more he was getting more PPR points when Luke Falk was a quarterback. Yeah, the running backs that I really looked at the whole time was Bell, Fournette, and then Cook or Chubb. There was I think those top four. I don't know. I, I don't maybe I'm just missing something with the Carson thing. But at six K, I d I don't Dude, I mean, here's the real kick in the family jewels is I played Bell and the Jets in cash. And Same. they somehow were ahead of Dallas the entire game and beat Dallas. They, 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 somehow, they somehow beat Dallas. They were seven-point underdogs. They beat Dallas, and the defense did not record a statistic. <laughs> One sack. They got oh, I didn't, even, I didn't see they finally got a sack. Yeah, 13.3 points total between the two of them. Like, you couldn't have run any hotter in terms of game script. I mean, just like ran like the no, sun's right. ass, and yeah. yet no fantasy points to be found. No, just <laughs> you know, no turnovers, no no classic DAC interception, just nothing. Yeah. <laughs> Why is this happening? This was not oh. a good play. Oh, I'm so poor. <laughs> it's uh Dude, this it's was a, a tough, tough scene, guys. This was a tough scene, bro. The entire day was <laughs> better last week when you like lose to one guy and it was just like, oh, I didn't have Will Fuller. I lost by 35 points. It's, you- it's definitely a lot worse when you can't even pinpoint exactly why you lost other than that you just made like 16 wrong choices. That's right. Like, I, I, I swear Austin to God, Hooper- like, last week I knew my lineup wasn't great and I just made fish decisions. I legit walked into this week with my – boys hanging low and I was just like let's go like I love this lineup reg 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 like I'm gonna pick up all these head of heads the only the only thing I the only thing I think was stupid was actually I had a lot I was just not playing Crowder after seeing the games play out the only thing I would do different was I would play Crowder that's it yeah but like the thing so so Cardi I believe had the in the blitz he was like the top point per dollar wide receiver and I played a lot of them in tournaments and pivoted off of Bell because they had such a crappy implied team total um, and I thought that was a sharp tournament pivot but I would I didn't want to play Jets and Bell and Crowder and Cash like I thought dude you get nine lineup spots I, I mean just the, the Jets being 1500 that I didn't consider that at all it's just like you were just literally and just hoping to get four isn't points there a negative correlation there with like defense and wide receivers who are going to get a bunch of targets there on the same uh, there, there, there is actually Nate yes that's so, why you wouldn't want to play him weren't you the one who was just talking about how you don't how you want to avoid over correlation yeah that's why I didn't Lamar. play Jameson Crowder mate but you just said the reason you wouldn't have played Jameson Crowder is because you wouldn't want Jets and your defense. If a defense does really, really well, it means that they're not going to be passing the ball. If the defense gets bad, not a lot of points, that means Jameson Crowder is going to see a lot of targets. So this actually def- it defeats your argument that you were talking about with Lamar and Andrews. I, I don't – I'm going to drink another truly because <laughs> – I mean, I, I, I feel Thanks, like we're you understand what I'm saying? same language, but you're saying like I'm, I'm somehow like he's the, using Sammy, like, Sammy's, Sammy's literally like too drunk and too like he's like thinking about what to do with an extra safety in the box. Like he can't even <laughs> figure out what you're saying. <laughs> I mean, I didn't want to play Bell and the Jets and Crowder. Like, how's that a bad thing? Dude, Austin Hooper was 61% owned. <laughs> oh, dude. So frustrated. Right in the bone hole. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> Oh, dude! Everybody had Kittle, and everybody saw the report, and they were like, "Dude, I'm gonna play Hooper." Like that's exactly what I did too, except for when I pivoted back. Just losing to the flowchart dude who's sixty. Like it just, it's just miserable. Austin I mean, Hooper I, literally stole a car from us this week. I'm I'm pretty miserable, man. Like I'm 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 down I'm down a couple Miatas the last two week, and it's uh, it just doesn't feel great. I'll tell you, I had a good poker session last night, so it's not so bad for me. But this is still pretty tilting. I thought I had a good lineup, man. I just needed, I just needed like one good fits like Rams drive combined. 
Like just like just like four for forty out of Woods and Fitzgerald. Like they both get that in the second half, and I'm just I'm walking down Easy Street. So That's Woods all I needed. scored that rushing. Wood scored the rushing touchdown on the first drive, and and I'm just like around. fist pumping. Yeah, like at what point did you realize you were dust? Second half, like say, like when when they came out, no adjustments. And and Henderson even fumbled, so I was like, okay, well Brown's just the dude. And then Brown got stuffed twice at like the inch yard line, so yep. that was not great. But but when it, when they came out in the second half, no changes, no no pre like no no cool plan, no unleashing this thing that that he's been saving for a you know a tough divisional win. Just I I just realized maybe Sean McVay doesn't know anything. Woods had four targets. How? Two rushing attempts, though. <laughs> Can you imagine? <laughs> so wait, if Woods, have... How many rushing attempts did Jarvis Landry have, bro? Anyway, <laughs> 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 uh, what did we do this week? <laughs> oh, oh, by the way, I also uh, uh, benched Hunter Henry for Will Disley in a seasonal league. <laughs> Oh, thank God. Uh, thank God, dude. At least we didn't lose to the Disley people. Yeah, I, I guess. Um, no, I, Will, I, Disley, I no, Will Disley points uh, put me in a coffin 100% of the time. I have no saving grace on the slate. You know what, what, what Kittle was uh, in this 25 massive double up that I'm looking at? He was 4.3% owned. I mean, that would have been your saving grace. He outscores Hooper by 10. You're, you're walking down easy was, street. Yeah. I think that was a good pivot, like game theory wise. Yeah, it was. Yeah, get, get, will you guys like give me like a Sklansky high five for that? <laughs> and some no, I think I think you I think you deserve some Sklansky bucks today. I do, man. Kyler was six point five percent. People, how how is that possible? Because people just spread it out at quarterback. Ten percent to all the good plays. Three percent to a bunch of bad plays. Eight percent to some of the medium tier plays. Still trying to figure out how I lost. I love uh, <laughs> the video of Sammy just looking at every. Well, I think <laughs> that's the way I lost everything. Just, just right. scratching my head. <laughs> Robert Robert Woods was out targeted by Gerald Everett today. Yep, yep. I played Everett in GPPs. <laughs> he did score. He did score a rushing touchdown though. I felt so sharp when he scored a rushing touchdown. I was just like, dude, Nate doesn't even understand Rams football. He just doesn't even he just doesn't even get that Robert Woods is the engine. It's it's a science, you know, it, it's an art. It's not a science. <laughs> Nate will never get this. <laughs> He'll never know. <laughs> I mean, I guess really my biggest issue with projecting the Rams is I just do not buy that Cooper Cup is Michael Thomas. Like there's just something in my brain that just won't let me accept that Cooper Cup's gonna get thirty two percent of a team's targets moving forward. I mean, he might be though. Like I hate Cup, but he might be the like he might be just a worse, least, less efficient Michael Thomas. Okay, Dude, we got to – What? We got to talk about next week. Can we just talk real quick about the fact that Julio Jones is legit, like, not a number one, like, just stud anymore with a volume that, – that's a volume monster and people still play him? Yeah, yeah, let's talk about it, Nate. Like, what is this? His target okay. share – It's just – Calvin Ridley and Hooper, dude. It's too good. Devonta Freeman, do? two, two receiving touchdowns. Dude, Devonta Freeman looked like a, a real NFL running back for the first time in like two years today. What if, what if you just stacked Ryan and Devonta Freeman and made a bunch of money? You you would have. Yeah. 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 Uh, so next and then week. Johnson on the other side. Why didn't I think of that? Jared Goff, 6.2 at Atlanta. How much? How how all in can you be? Uh, I'm I'm not I'm in, in at all. I'm zero percent in because in. here was the big issue with me in GPPs. My entire thinking was, okay, I'm playing Malcolm Brown in cash, and I'm going to pivot off him in a bunch of GPPs. I'm going to do a golf to wood stack. I'm going to do a golf to cook stack. I'm going to do some Gerald Everett as a one off. Uh, but the actual play was playing zero Rams at all. That was the way that you made money: is not playing any Rams. But all I did was play Rams because uh, I'm a fish. So 
I'm not going to play them next week, and they'll smash, and it'll be great. I can't wait. <laughs> Josh Allen, 6,500 at home against the Miami Dolphins. Sure, any anybody, anybody but Jared Goff. <laughs> Ky- I mean, Kyler, <laughs> Kyler, <laughs> Kyler Lamar, <laughs> Kyler Kyler Lamar, and Deshaun are the three most expensive and the three best plays. Yeah, Kyler's running the ball now. I mean, it's hard not to play a guy like Kyler. Dang, Sammy, your Steelers are not on the main slate. Thank God. No, tough, dude. Benny Snell would have been the men. No, James bro. Connor, oh, James Conner banged his quad. Yeah, he's fine. He's a man. Uh, Sa- yeah. Sa- yeah, it'll be a, a great opportunity for me to stay, fade Saquon when he gets 28 again uh, at home to the Arizona Cardinals. I'm probably not going to look at next week's slate until, like, Thursday. I, I, I can't look. Like, the last two weeks got me shook, bro. <laughs> Straight shook. Yeah, it's not great. Yeah. It, dude, yeah. It's, been, it's been a tough scene. Like, I started off this season like gangbusters, but, like, the last two weeks are just egregious. Dude, imagine if we have to do another losing show next week. It's probably just because the show's just going to get canceled. What's Jameson Crowder? Canceled. Dude, our, our the, the listeners are showing up because we lose. Like those are the best shows. Uh Jamison Crowder is not on the main slate next week. Jets no. are Jets are not on the main slate. Sucks. Thank God. I won't have to waste my money on Le'Veon. I'm Dust Bell anymore. D- DJ Shark comes off his worst game of the year is now six thousand. What's Tyreek? They're not on the main slate either. You know what tilts me? I had Tyreek in cash in my very first build. I was like 6.9 for Tyreek Hill. If he plays, like, why would you not? Holy cow. I just – dude, Sammy, the reason you, Boyd died was Auden Tate stole his soul. Yeah, Auden Tate had Auden 11 Tate targets. Is the number one. <laughs> you lost to Auden freaking – Look, bro, I, I can't really breathe with you uh, piling up dirt on <laughs> <laughs> Being buried alive on a podcast like that. Oh, he had 12 targets. He had 12 targets. Oh. Oh god, this is this is really painful. I didn't even know who Auden Tate was until like 11 days ago. I'd never heard his name before in my life. And he just buried Boyd. <laughs> he's like a really bad slow wide receiver from Florida State he's and a tight, uh, he's a tight end. Sammy, you should go. You should go take a look at our touchdown list, uh, super flex team. And by touchdown list, I'm including our super flex quarterbacks. I don't want to. I don't want to talk about this. <laughs> I think we scored like 46 points today. <laughs> <laughs> at least one person got knocked out of the survivor. <laughs> <laughs> at, least we, at least, at least, our Melvin Gordon best ball team finally got him back. <laughs> This weekend! <laughs> so bad! I need to drink more. It's the only, way, only way to get through this. Alright, I think I think that should I think that should do it. I think the people have got enough of this. Please, please end it. Everyone make sure to check out dailyroto.com, rotogrinders.com, uh, all the all that good stuff. And uh, we'll be back hopefully in a better mood next week. 